Hello, and welcome to Relatively Crafty A Knitting Podcast. I am your host, Christy. I come to you from the Denver area of Colorado, where I live with my husband, Ron, and our two daughters, Tatum, who is 13, and Delaney, who is 10, and our tuxedo kitty, Lilu. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now that there is going to be some background noise, and I apologize for that, but they are tearing out our plumbing outside. <laughs> Um, and they're making lots and lots of noise with it, and it is already late in the day, so um, it's uh, 3.15 in the afternoon here, and so I need to get this going. Um, I don't really have time for to wait for them to finish. So I do apologize ahead of time for any banging noise you hear. Now the tearing out of the plumbing is a good, good, good thing, because we've had issues, we live in townhouse, in a townhouse, and um, we've had issues with the uh, us and the neighbors on either side having um, flooding in the basement. It's not something that happens every month or every other month. It's you know every four to six months the basements, um, the the sewage backs up and they back up into our basements, and it's been an issue. And the HOA. Um, hasn't fixed it until now. Um, we had a new, we had a different HOA that changed last summer, and um, this new HOA seems to be taking responsibility, um, which is really nice. So they are tearing out the the uh, plumbing. There's a there's a spot underneath the parking area that um, that there's that's where the blockage keeps happening, and so they're tearing it out and redoing it so that it won't be blocked anymore, and hopefully we won't get any more poopy water in our basement, which is a really good thing in my book. I will put up with some plumbing and construction outside my house um, if if it means that I no longer have to be woken up to the geyser <laughs> of foul sewer water in my basement anymore. If you are looking for me, you can find me on Ravelry as Christy Dash Lael and on Instagram as Christy Leo without the dash. I am also Christy Leo without the dash on Goodreads, uh, if you are a reader. And we have a relatively crafty podcast group on Ravelry where we have giveaways and knit-alongs and fun chatter. We are currently having our wonderful winter warm-up cal, which goes from uh, the beginning of winter to the end of winter. So you have um, a couple of weeks left. I think it's March 19th is the last day. And you are encouraged to knit anything or crochet anything out of worsted weight or above or make a blanket. I guess and slash or because you can knit something or crochet something out of worsted weight and then also make a blanket if you wish. Um, and the blanket can be out of any weight of yarn. Okay, so I guess that is all the administrative stuff. I want to... Um, Well, I was going to say I want to apologize for the lateness of this video, but it's not really going to be put up any later, or much later. Um, uh, I I am recording late in the day because this morning I took my first CLEP test. Uh, if you're new to the podcast, I have just finished the classes for my bachelor's degree in accounting from Grand Canyon University, and I have... I am a few credits short, um, and so I can either take four more classes or I can take a CLEP test. CLEP test, basically, it's, I think it stands for college level examination of proficiency or something like that. And basically, if you pass the test, you say, I already know everything that I would have learned from taking this class, so the, they'll give you college credit for it. Uh, without having to take it. And it's quite a bit of a financial uh, boon, I guess you could say, to take a club test or take a couple of club tests. The classes are about two grand each um, at GCU. And, um, and while I don't have a problem paying that for, you know, the accounting classes, because I learned so much when it comes to things like human growth and development, which aren't really going to help me much with my, um, uh, degree. And so I can pay, uh, about a hundred dollars and take a CLEP test, assuming of course that I pass the CLEP test. And I've been very nervous because I don't really test well. I feel like as I've gotten older, my 
the ability for my brain to sponge and retain information has diminished and so I was very nervous about not just not being able to retain all the information and uh, that uh, anxiety that I was already having from having to take the test was exacerbated when I discovered that the study guide that I had purchased and had been studying from didn't really have as much information on it um, as the test had and so I wasn't didn't go into the test feeling very prepared and um, I was concerned that I was going to fail and I was going to fail the easy test that I have to take because the human growth and development is the easy one I also have American literature and natural sciences and social sciences and so um, anyway long story short too late I know um, I went into the test this morning terrified but figured well I'll just do my best I studied as best as I could and I um, I'll just try my best and I passed Yay! Um, I barely passed I think you needed a 50 and I got a 53 um, uh, that's not a 50% that's just I think 50 questions right I got 53 questions right and um, and so I made it. A pass is a pass. They, they don't they don't go by score. Um, they just go pass fail. So I passed it. I'll get my college credit for that one. And uh, now I have only three left to do and I will be completely done with my degree. So um, anyway, that is uh, the reason why I am late because I had to deal, deal with that and um, and then I had to celebrate with a friend of mine. So um, anyway, okay, let's go ahead and get into the knitting. I do have an FO this week, thankfully. Although I only have the one. But it is a cute one. I finished my Hippo for Valentine's socks. So this is the um, 2018 version of the Hippo for the Holidays that Lauren at Lolo Did It has been hosting. Uh, I did it last year and I wasn't going to do it this year, but I've kind of fallen into it. I still haven't decided if I'm going to do it for the full year, but I'm going to do it for now. Uh, so this is Hippo for the Holidays in her plush sock base, and I used, uh, not Hippo for the Holidays, this is Hippo for Valentine's out of her plush sock base, and I used a maze in a little Lolo, which are her 20 gram minis uh, for heels and toes. I have to admit that one of a big reason why I am considering doing Hippo for the Holidays again this year is so that I can get a full set of the Holidays socks with uh, contrasting or coordinating heels and toes because a lot of the Holidays that I knit last year, especially the ones during the summer, I ended up knitting into other things. You know, I knit a cowl, I knit a couple of hats, I knit a pair of gloves. Um, so. So yeah, I kind of want to have just a whole set of the socks with the heels and the toes and the colors. So <laughs> we'll see. But um, I did enjoy these. I did them with my normal stripey recipe, Turkish toe cast on toe up. Uh, I did a fish lips kiss heel. Uh, this is what I do when I have just a solid um, contrasting toe, or er, heel rather, and um, and then I did one by one ribbing with a surprise, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, just my normal thing that I do with socks. The only thing I really change with socks is the heels, and that only depends on if they are stripey socks or or if they are solid, or if they are speckly socks. So yeah, uh, love these. Glad that they are done. I finished them before the end of the month, which is always good. And that's the only thing that I finished. So, um, getting the whips. I'm just going to flash these real quick. I didn't do any work on these this week. This is the Rainbow Wanderer stop socks that I am knitting out of Bewitched Knits in the Rainbow Dash colorway. Um, I put these on hold because, uh, because I was just into other things this week, and so they just kind of sat up here. But I am still, you know, planning to get them finished um, hopefully by next by the end of March I should have them done let's we'll see <laughs> they're not as fun to knit on as I've mentioned before they're not terrible but they're just not quite as much fun I know that if I sit down um, and just focus on them um, 
for a couple of hours I will have at least the first one done. Um, but yeah, I'll get to them eventually. And then my other sock whip that I have going, I believe last week I had showed you this finished sock. Yeah, I'm almost positive I did. Um, so this is out of Quare Fibers in the Peacock colorway. Absolutely love this colorway. And I had just the toe uh, cast on last week for the second sock. I've gotten a little bit further. I've focused a lot on my Valentine socks. Um, so I got those finished in time. And these I don't have to finish in any kind of time frame. Technically, I didn't really have to have these finished by the end of February either, but I wanted to. So there's that. Um, so yeah, so I will have these finished by next week, almost definitely for sure. Love, love this colorway so much. And then in regards to my boss sweater, which um, I had showed you guys last week, I was knitting it out of art, not last week, I showed it to you the week before. I was knitting it out of Art Yarns Regal Silk, which is 100% silk. Um, and the sweater, which looks like this, is designed by um, Jimenez jo Joseph. And um, it's gorgeous. It's, you know, it's a lacy short sleeve top, and I was excited about it. I love the look on it, Look, love the look of it, and I've seen it. Several projects done with women of all different sizes, and it just looks so flattering on so many body types. Mm -hmm. But I was knitting it out of 100% silk, and the pattern is written for a merino silk blend. And what I was noticing is that the fabric that I was getting was not not what I wanted. And so, well, you know what? Let me grab it so you guys can see it. Hang on. So I've been holding it in my single strand, a single strand um, knitting sayings bag, which I absolutely love. And let's see, what's the front side? Here's the right side. This is what I had, and it's so soft. Super, super duper soft. Um, being 100% silk, it's like butter. But I'm just not keen on the way it's knitting up. Even though I'm on gauge, I can tell it's going to be too big. I don't want it to be super huge. I know that you can't block silk the way you can block other things. So I've decided that I'm going to frog this because um, I would hate to go through all, hate because I would hate to go through all of this work with this lace and then not not enjoy wearing it. So um, I'm gonna frog this. I've got, I went on Knitpick's website and I picked out their, um, what is it, the Gloss DK? I think it's Gloss. That is their Silk Merino Blend, and I'm going to knit it out of that instead. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with six skeins of 100% Silk Yarn. Probably going to de-stash it because I, I don't think I want to knit with it. Um, it would be great for, you know, a shawl or a long scarf that you were going to, you wanted to have to be very, you know, fancy around the neck, but I'm not that type of person. So, so yeah, I will probably de-stash it. I'll sell it, um, out of my stash to another knitter who wants to knit with it. I have, um, six full skeins. They've all been wound, of course, because I was going to make the sweater, but, um, I can rescain them and frog this, and then yeah, I will knit the sweater again when I get the yarn. It is one of the one of the things on my bingo card, so it does have to get done this year. Uh, and I've wanted to knit it for a long time, so it would be good to knit uh, this year, but um, but just not out of that yarn. Um, and then one of the reasons why I was about how I came to that uh, revelation about not wanting to make it out of that yarn that I wasn't loving be, was because I was 
knitting on this and I was loving this so much. This is my Snowflake, which is a sweater by uh, pattern by Tin Can Knits, which I am knitting out of um, the Verdant Griffin um, in Dirty Deeds Done With Sheep and Madagascan Sunset Moth. Um, and I'm absolutely loving this. I haven't gotten very much further than you guys saw last week, a couple of inches, maybe three inches. Um, and <laughs> there's a silly reason for that, because I'm loving this. I love every stitch that I put into this. This Madagascan Sunset Moth is just amazing. Amazing. Um, uh, but the reason why I haven't finished this, or haven't gotten farther, is because I got sucked into another sweater. And that's silly, I know. Um, but I, I simply couldn't help myself. You see, I have my bingo card, which is a knit-along, kind of a year, I'm going to say knit-along, kind of like a, a personal challenge that Aaron at Bling Your String is hosting. And you can kind of notice I marked off the ones that I finished, so I, I knit the Comfort Fade Cardi. I tried new to me indie dyers, both buying and knitting. Um, I've done that several times already, especially with the buying. I uh, got my free space. Um, I frogged my pavement sweater and reused the yarn. And I was going to knit a sweater for Delaney out of it. But what I did instead was I gave it to a friend who does charity knitting. And so that's how the yarn is being reused. It's, um, it's being used for charity knitting by somebody else. And I feel okay about that. Um, and then the last one here is to knit my Athena sweater, which is the purple one that I just made just a couple of weeks ago. So I almost have a bingo, a line. And all I need left, all I have left to finish that first bingo line is to knit Delaney a sweater out of the Knit Picks Capria that I have in stash. And Erin so nicely pointed out that I almost had a bingo and that it would be great if I got one. And so I thought about it and I thought, yeah, it would be great. So I pulled out the Knit Picks Capria that I have in stash. And that is, it's some, this is old, deep, deep, deep stash. I don't even know where, how I got it. But I had like a, like a sampler set. Um, and I decided to make it, it's some kind of like, like a nautical sampler set, um, mostly blues and blue greens and this cream. And, um, and, and so I was going to make something for Delaney years ago when she was really little. And then I decided, then, you know, the too much time passed. So I went ahead, so I had to buy some more to make it <laughs> to fit Delaney. And so I did. Um, and And then um, it sat in my stash even longer. And I knew that if I didn't knit this up this year, that she was going to outgrow what I could knit with what I had. And I was going to have to buy more of a yarn that I was just kind of meh about in order to make a sweater for Delaney. And um, so I decided, you know what, it's fine. Let's just do it. Just knit it. So I have, let's see, I had two skeins in cream which is just a cream. I have three skeins in Hunter, which is a, you know, a deep forest green. I had one skein in Admiral, which is a dark navy. One skein in Sea Spray, which is this light blue. And then the last skein I had was a single skein in Harbor which is this color right here. This is all I have left of that single skein. Um, and so I was going to do like maybe color block sweater or stripe sweater, and I found a pattern that I liked. The pattern is Arctic Coast by Gabrielle Dansknit, and, um, and it's knitting up very fast. And I'm just doing it in the colors that I have. So there you go. This is most of the body. You can see I'm using the hunter, the, the deep green, as the the main color, I guess. And then my contrastings are the other ones. 
And uh, when I got through all of the colors, I asked Delaney what she wanted me to do. If she wanted me to go back to the white or if she wanted me to do it in reverse. And she said to do it in reverse. So that is what I've done. So I will finish out the white stripes. And I think that will be the end of the body. I'll just do the, the button band or the ribbing at the bottom. And then I'll use the hunter. And I'll do that in the hunter. And I'll use the hunter also for the button band. But you might notice... There are no sleeves yet. I don't have sleeves. And <laughs> I have this much of the harbor left, which is not enough to do the sleeves. So I don't know what I'm going to do with the sleeves. I am not buying any more of this yarn. I've decided I'm not going to buy any more of this yarn. I'm just going to make the sweater out of what I have here. So I have a full skein and some of the cream. I can use that. I have one full skein, almost two full skeins of the Hunter still, but I expect that I'll use most of this for the for the ribbing at the bottom. Um, and then I have a decent amount of the Admiral and the Sea Spray. I'm just gonna stripe it somehow, it, but it's not going to match the body. And I'm okay with that. But it's cute, huh? So far. I love how it's working up. It's super fast. And the yarn is very soft. Very, very, very soft. Um, it's 85% merino and 15% uh, cashmere. So it is super soft, but I can tell that it's going to pill. It's already... like it, it, it's, it doesn't have very much fortitude <laughs> in its makeup. So, um, but that's, you know, it's okay. It's a child's sweater. This is not something that she's going to wear for five years. It's not even something she's probably going to wear for three years. Um, you know, she can wear it for the rest of this winter and maybe next winter, winter and I'm fine with that. Um, so, yeah, there we go. That's what I got. That is my last whip. And I, I know that that whole story was a bit convoluted, and I apologize for that. I used up all my brain power on the test. I ain't got none left. <laughs> and when I finish it, I will have a full bingo. And my, uh, let's see, what have I got? Oh, my snowflake sweater is right here, so that'll get me closer to that bingo. Um, and then here is my bo Knitterly Things box of socks, which is a year-long project. And here is six hippos for the holidays. So I'm, you know, getting close to that. And then I have my rainbow dash socks are right here. So those are the things that I'm kind of working on currently. Oh, and my and knit my old, three oldest skeins, which I'm almost through two of those. So, marking things off, and that's good. Okay, so that is all of the knitting. So, I guess we'll get into yarn haul. And while I don't have quite the yarn haul I had last week, it's... It, it's a decent size. First of all... I made an order from Knit Picks. I don't buy from Knit Picks very often, but I wanted to have some, some some naked yarn that I could attempt to dye before I tried to dye um, better yarn, basically. So I got two skeins of their Swish Worsted uh, in the Naked uh, to try dyeing. Um, I don't know... I don't know the plan. Uh, if the dyeing comes out well, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. But uh, it's 100% superwash merino, 220 yards worsted weight. And hopefully I can dye them into something decent. Um, I'm, I'm looking to dye a sweater quantity of Cascade Eco that um, I used to have in a sweater, and now I want to knit into a different sweater. And I'm looking to get a semi-solid, so I will probably try to dye these as a semi-solid as well. So, yeah, yarn, blank yarn. Also in my Knit Picks order, I picked up two Socket to Me cards. 
Um, when I had did had, when I had done the fiber arts tag, I had mentioned that this is my favorite tool, knitting tool. Um, I use this for measuring socks that I'm knitting, and um, and a couple of people had because I I had gotten mine at my local yarn store ten years ago and wasn't sure where you could find them and somebody mentioned that you could get them a couple of places but Knit Picks was one of the places and so I went ahead and picked up two to use as giveaways. So um, I'm not exactly sure when. Um, I will probably put them into prize packs for a knit along or something like that. So there's that. And then, let's see. This just came today. I got it from Amazon. It's a gleaner. Knit Picks had a gleaner, and I almost got theirs, but, um, but Knit Picks was purple, and this one was orange. <laughs> So, um, I got that. So it comes, I, I, this is the first time I'm opening it. I know nothing about it. Looks like there's a lip brush on this end. And then a couple of pill and lint removers in this package that go on to this end. So I'll have to kind of read on how to use that. Um, but I've heard great things about it. And so I got one of those. And another tool that I got that I'm excited about, I got this from Webs. This is a Knitter's Pride, what is it, like a chart keeper? Um, and I actually, I bought one from Knit Picks first, but they only had black. And you know how I feel about black. So, um, but I was like, but I want one, and I haven't seen one that's a different color. And it happened to be like the next day that I watched... Um, the Naughty Knitwits podcast, and um, Michelle was showing the one that she got, and it was prettier. It wasn't this one, it was a different one, but it was prettier, and I was like, oh, they have them in different colors, where can I find those? And Webs had them. So it is a Knitter's Pride chart keeper, and it has a snap, and when you open it up, here is this magnetized board, and you can see that you have um, magnets. So you put the chart on there, and then use this, and it keeps your place, and you just slide it as you go. And I just really liked that idea, because I use highlighter tape most often, and I find that it loses its sticky, and I have to take it off and reposition it all the time, and I hate that. Uh, this also came with a pen, a little zipper pouch for keeping things, um, a little, like, loop for holding things, and, uh, yeah, and then you can snap this this way. <laughs> there you go. And so that your thing can stand up on the table. So, yeah. So, um... As we mentioned, I now have two, um, one from Knit Picks and one from Knitter's Pride. So I will probably, I haven't opened the Knit Picks one, it's black, not a big fan of black. So I will probably have this as a prize as well, and that's why it's still in this packaging, because I don't want to take it out if I'm going to prize it. Um, this is the small, by the way, which is perfect for a half sheet of paper. Um, they have a large, which I think is for, like, for a full sheet. But I didn't want it to be too big. Okay. I think that's all the tools. So, yarn. Also from Webs, I got two skeins of opal. This is Opal Sunrise in the colorway uh, 9440, which is Machinger Horizont, Horizont, probably butchered that, I'm not German, um, although my family is German, so maybe I should be better at that, I don't know, <laughs> anyway, it's, it's just like blue and, and kind of an orangey red, or a reddy, red-ish orange, um, not sure who that's going to be for, but I'm kind of wanting to have some more, um, 
commercial yarns in my stash for gift socks and stuff like that for socks for Ron and even for socks for me because like this one <laughs> this is gorgeous and I'm super excited to knit this this is also opal it's a shaft pet shaft pet uh, four tet nine nine I know my Roman numerals nine one X um, and it is in colorway Fernway which is nine four one four and it's just lots of colors lots of bright happy colors so, yeah, I got those two. Um, and then that's all I got from Webs. Then I made an order from Heat Sleep Knit. They have an exclusive colorway from Blue Moon Fiber Arts uh, in their socks that rock medium weight. And it is Gadgets and Gizmos, which I'm assuming is a um, Little Mermaid reference. Uh, I just liked it because it has so many colors. This part right here is just making me very happy. Um, I thought that would make fun socks. So I got a skein of that in their medium weight, which is like a heavy fingering. Um, and then I also got a skein of Dream and Color Classy in a discontinued colorway. This is a kettle dyed color and it is Bermuda teal and it was just pretty. Classy is their worsted weight. Um, and it kind of goes along with the flower drum song that I showed you guys last week. I may put them together. I may not. I don't know. I just haven't, like it's an issue. I, I have a problem. I'm buying yarn just because it's pretty without any plan, which is okay for sock yarn, but I'm not buying a lot of sock yarn as much. <sighs> oh, I am. Uh, as I'm looking down at the rest of this is all sock yarn. So maybe I am still buying a lot of sock yarn. Um, I, uh, part of the deal with the uh, knit along that Desert Vista Dye Works puts their, their annual Sock of the Month Club dye, knit along um, is that if you do it for three months, uh, for each three months you get a, um, up to a 30% off coupon. And um, so I had one left, so I went ahead and used that and ordered three skeins from Desert Vista Dye Works. These are all in the Viso base. This is Never Say You're Sorry. It's beautiful, like red and lime green and aqua. This one is Absinthe, which has got pink, purple, green, and like an orangey cream. I love that green. And then lastly, I have Limpopo, which is orange, blue, and white. And these are all self stripers. Um, yeah, so those I'm absolutely thrilled with. And that was supposed to be it, but last night somebody at the yarn shop while I was at knit night pointed out that they had a bunch of gradient kits on deep discount and I got up and looked. I shouldn't have gotten up and looked, but I got up and looked. Look at this, guys. Can you see that without the glare? There. Sorry for the crinkling. This is Lydia. Lydia Yarn. Um, this is Lydia stands for Luxury Yarn Dyed in America. So their sock weight. It's a gradient pack. Um, 7525 blend. Uh, there are 230 yards in each of the skeins with 100, meaning 1150 yards. Let me show you. Look at those colors. This is called Minty Fresh, the colorway. Just so gorgeous. I can't, can't even. These here. Look at those guys. How could you say no to that? I couldn't say no to that. That just the most beautiful green gradient. Love. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with that. Um, I, I did do my um, so faded pullover using about 200 more yards and that was a full length sweater with full length sleeves so I could um, I could use I could make that with you know with this gradient and use a shorter sleeve or I also have this gradient kit from um, Black Trillium Fibers in their Lilt Sock base, and it's their Smoke Gradient. There's only 675 yards in this one, but I could, I could 
put these together. Maybe stripe them. Maybe do something. That would be enough for a sweater. I don't know. I'm going to think about it. I've got time. I've got so many other sweaters that I've got to knit that, yeah, I don't have to work on it right now. Or pick out something right now, rather. Okay, so that is, that's it. That's all the stuff I've got. Um, so let's go ahead and get into books. I have two books to talk about. The first one is A Man Called Uva, um, which I had just started last week, uh, but it was a reread. I read through it very quickly. I absolutely loved it. It is my one of my favorite books. Uva makes me laugh. Uva makes me cry. Um, I, I love I love him. And they um, they have a Swedish language movie that came out in 2015 that I'm probably going to watch this weekend. But Tom Hanks is also producing an American version of this movie, and he's going to play Uva, which. That, I mean, I love Tom Hanks as an actor, but I don't know if he's going to be able to pull off the crotchety that Uva needs to be. Um, but we'll see. You know, Doc Martin. Have you ever guys? Have you, have you ever seen the show Doc Martin? Doc Martin would be a good Uva. Anyway, um, I love this book. I highly recommend it. I cannot recommend it enough. I think everybody should read this book, and. Um, yeah, it's just, I love this book. Just love, 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 love this book. It, it, yeah, it got me just as much as it did the last time. And the other book that I have been reading, I only have the dust cover for, but it is The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. Um, this is a short book. It's only 200 pages or so, and I wasn't sure what to expect from it so much. It's set in the 70s in Alaska and part of part of me is in love with that because I lived in Alaska. Now I lived in Alaska in the late 90s but from what I can surmise from the book not all that much changed. Um, Alaska is a different it, at least back then I don't know what it's like now but it, it was a different world. It was very different from living in the lower 48s. Um, you know, it, it, not just the lower 48, but just in California. Going from California to Alaska was quite a quite a culture shock. And I loved it when I was 20, living there. I didn't live there for very long, about four months, but it was such a great experience, and it's such a beautiful, beautiful place to be. Um, so I am enjoying this book because of that, but it's a hard book to read. There's a lot of hard... Um, hard lessons, I guess. Um, this is set in the 70s, as I said, and it follows five different teenagers going through some pretty harsh things. Oh, I guess it's four. So the back says, four very different lives are about to become entangled. Ruth wants to be remembered. Dora wishes she were invisible. Alice can't bring herself to leave, and Hank is running away. They live in Alaska, on the cold edge of America, where each one must find strength, courage, and heart to survive. And, um, yeah, it's, that's a good synopsis of the story. So, it's a quick book, but it's heavy, so just keep that in mind. But I am enjoying it, I think it's well written, and um, I'm looking forward to finishing it. And that's it, guys. I'm going to get this edited as quickly as I can after a... I clean up my mess, of course, and um, and yeah, I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday, rest of your Wednesday, however much of it is left at your end of the world, and I will talk to you guys later. Happy knitting! <laughs>